All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome back for part two of our professional development workshop. Um, my name is John Roberson. You guys are uh, more than welcome to call me JR. I'm joined again today with my colleague Shane, and we're super excited for you all to join us for the second day, as we said, of our professional development series here. So today, uh, we're super excited. We're going to be diving deeper into our play partnership guide. So we alluded to this a little bit um, more for those that joined. Uh, we alluded to this for those that joined the previous session. Uh, so super excited to dive into um, more of what the play partnership guide is today with you all um, and really get you guys feedback. So with that, let's not hold up because we want to get to the to the meat and that's you guys telling us uh what you guys think and reacting to what we developed here so let's hop into the next slide and again the 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 premise around us building this tool is again the importance of building sustainable partnerships we know like you guys know the value of being able to partner like we couldn't do this without you all here obviously so the partnerships are are critical not only to us as practitioners but also to our talent and um our student bases who are oftentimes looking to build or access different networks of social capital. So uh, through enhancing the structured approach of building collaborative partnerships, uh, we're aiming, the play tool is aiming to really both benefit both practitioners and the BIPOC talent that we're serving today. So with that, I'm super excited to bring my colleague Shane to the table and he's gonna walk us through our play partnership guide today. Oh, I keep doing this, my bad Shane. And uh, one thing before I bring Shane in, um, the tool that we built, if you have uh, joined us yesterday on our power, you heard this already, but for our new newbies here, um, we've designed our tools and, um, to, to meet the immediate needs that we heard directly from you all. So we designed a daily, monthly, and a triage approach in the daily approach. And you'll see this throughout our tool and assets as we go through it in the daily approach. It's designed for adult, for interacting with uh, talent or students um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you have a curriculum or if you're meeting on a regular basis, the daily approach probably would be most suited to your needs as you can, again, sort of dissect it and pick it apart. And, you know, you know that you're going to have a consistent touch base with that student or with that talent. On a monthly approach, again, you can think about this if you have a uh, weekly schedule or biweekly cadence that you're meeting with think more curriculum here, uh, you're able to insert the framework and the tools and assets uh, within it into a already pre-established framework or curriculum. Or, you know, if you have a monthly reoccurring appointment with the student or talent that you're uh, providing counseling services or coaching services um, or, you know, academic advising services to or whatnot, um, you'll be able to have a scheduled approach um, on a monthly basis that you'll be able to engage and monitor their progress throughout the uh, course of utilizing our tool here. And then finally, our triage approach is really based for um, those randomized drop-ins. So, hey, a talent that you may not have strong bonds or a connection to, they may be hard to reach, they kind of pop in and out at will, or it may be the first time and you're not sure if you're going to be able to connect with them again. This the triage approach is really de designed to say, hey, we have X amount of time. Here's the most value that we can give you in this one block of time that we have. So for any of you all uh, that are um, engaging talent on a randomized basis, the triage approach might be suitable to your needs in that sense there. So with that, um, now I finally want to bring my colleague Shane uh, to the table to actually walk us through our play worksheet. Awesome. Thanks, JR. And it's so excited to reconnect with the folks we saw yesterday. And it's super exciting to tap in with some of our new folks uh, for our last session uh, of this week. So I'm Shade Nelson. I'm, cons I'm a consultant with uh, the Leaders Up team, really helping out in their stakeholder engagement process. And then as I shared with folks yesterday, um, I'm a former community college practitioner. So these tools are, are near and dear to my heart. Um, we're super excited to make sure that you get these learnings and also let us know uh, where we need to add in additional elements based off of your experiences so that this tool is used in your everyday practice. So we start with partner identification, right? So finding the right teammates for your goals. Now, one of the things that we built into this tool, and you'll see that 
in our actual guide that we'll be able to send it everyone digitally is a call out with this particular tool for play as a whole for staff and for the talent that you work with. Because we understand that turnover is a real thing in different workforce organizations, educational organizations, nonprofits, what have you. So we want to make sure that there's sustained partnerships throughout. And we're building these uh, zero gravity batons, right? Something that you can pass to someone that won't fall through the cracks because it's organized, it's structured, it's ready to go. And it's an exact copy of what we're giving to students and talent with a little bit of nuance. So we're excited to jump in with you. So here with partner identification, we really want to start off with a partner brainstorm. So we're thinking about what are the different areas that we can get creative with in our partnerships. Say we are the marketing office and we know we want to add more elements to our programming element. How do we partner with the programming office? How do we partner with a office on campus that we've never partnered before, right? Let's brainstorm there. Then we think about some of the ways we can communicate collaboratively going in with a mindset of we're both going to win together because we may not know what's going to come of this partnership rather than one of compromise, right? That involves loss on both sides. It's important to also think about where we're building in insights, opportunities, and really being data-driven. So that critical evaluation, thinking about our larger strategy as a whole, as an organization, when we're going into partnership conversations, and then figuring out inclusivity and a safe environment. So this is where we kind of switch from doing the work internally as a staff member and switching to talent and students and where that change really happens. So play or partner identification for talent looks more like who are the organizations within your ecosystem that can help you get to that next step. We've already worked through power. You understand where you want to go and you've been using reflection and feedback. So now it's time to give you a coalition of the willing to help you in your uh, journey to economic empowerment. So you only need uh, paper, whiteboard, markers, and pens to really just start jotting down. Who are your ideal partners? What's your dream team? And how do we build that out? So this is it at a kind of broader, high-level view. And we want to hear from you. What questions do you have? Now let's get learning. So the learning and assess stage really helps us gain the insights and make evaluated, informed decisions. So we're going from I brainstormed to what did I learn and how can I act on it? So here we've built in to uh, the tool that we're going to be sharing out digitally, a student needs assessment. So this is where you can think about what your students are experiencing across what we like to call our SOP, our safety, opportunity, and power framework um, to make sure that students are feeling safe. They know that they're going into safe environments. They can perceive equitable opportunities and also pinpoint where they're feeling powerless so we can empower them through partnership. So we really want to make sure we're forming strategies collaboratively. We're thinking about problems that we need to solve that our partners can help us with because they're holding a whole different area of expertise that we can then leverage and then amplify how we're empowering our students, how we're empowering our talent to actually make those decisions and then think about where they need to adapt to make this partnership really thrive. So instead of just this approach of, you know, come as you are, we're helping the students say, all right, if I'm going into this office that can help me with benefits, or if I'm talent going to an office at an uh, AJCC or an American Job Center in California, right? What do you need to adapt to get the most out of that partnership opportunity? They're still gonna meet you where, where you're at in your journey, but how are we uh, making those adjustments? So now we wanna hear from you. What are the different tools and techniques that you've used to learn and assess different partnerships? What light bulb moments just happened? Share it out, let's hear from you. Now we've done the, our due diligence of what partners we wanna work with or who we wanna work with. We've figured out how we need to make adjustments. Now it becomes the other side of that equation, right? Getting aligned with what our partners' needs and interests are so we can really create some collaborative opportunities. So we're emphasizing the more collaborative aspects here, right? Across the entire tool, really, but really drilling down on effective communication, documenting our needs, how we should be collaborating with you as a partner or how talent should be collaborating with offices um, within their ecosystem, 
and then ultimately think about some of the advocacy points and power dynamics that are in play. Thinking in the context of a community college, working with the president's office may be a lot different than working with the office of student life. Why is that, right? Where are the power dynamics there? And what do we have to be mindful of? So we honor everyone's time and we treat everyone, right? With this level of, you know, executive privilege, if you will. And thinking in the context of talent working with other offices, it's a little bit different when you're working with the supervisor's office to get a uh, you know, career uh, empowerment tactic done or across the desk for everyone than it is working with you know, one of your local partners, right? So how are we thinking about the power dynamics that we're playing with as we get more aligned? So we have a better understanding of where power can be shared. And this is where that partnership alignment map really comes into focus. You can draw out where the overlaps are. It may end up looking like that Venn diagram, right? This is where we're owning in our partnership. This is where they're owning in their partnership. And how are we coming together, right? What's that nexus point? So let's get a line from you. What are your feedback points here? And then finally, it's time for your value proposition. So if we're taking the, the student and talent track, we're at the stage now where talent feel like they know where to go to get their needs met outside of your office. They have an understanding of the power dynamics that they may need to adjust for and how they need to show up as their best self. And now finally, they're going to be able to articulate that value proposition or that why they need to uh, be in partnership either with another organization, with some of their colleagues, so on and so forth. And if you're a staff member of an organization, um, whether you're on a campus or you're out in the community, this is where you can really start tailoring that approach in your language to ensure that you're getting new champions for your work or re, re kind of engaging uh, individual that you've been working with in a newer way into the new year. So this is where we really want to articulate our values. We want to utilize the feedback that partners give us, understand that we might get a little confidence boost, right? Talking about ourselves, putting a spotlight on our offices. Because um, sometimes, you know, doing work in the community may not be the most glamorous work, but it's the most impactful. And we want to make sure that we're taking up space to highlight the work that we're doing, because it's all amazing work that we're doing. And then being strategic on where we place our pitches, because this is where we can go to a community event and have a couple value propositions in our back pocket to say, okay, if I'm going to somewhere that's going to be heavily focused on housing access, what do I need to know from my students or what do I need to know from my talent to get those resources or to start that partnership, right? And in the same way, if you're about to collaborate with another organization like a Leaders Up, you want to know, okay, Leaders Up is a workforce intermediary that's going to help advocate for me and additionally make sure that my talent have access to economic empowerment. What do they need to know? And Because we're doing the same thing on our side, right? We're doing our research, making sure we're on the same page. So everything that we're kind of telling you is something that's in our back pocket always that we're always trying to practice and refine. And so this is where we're bringing everything together from rise, from power, and finally, in this last stage of play, making sure that value proposition is as precise and as strategic as possible so we're driving more equitable partnerships for everyone. And now we want to hear from you, right? What, what needs to adjust in our value proposition? Is our elevator pitch hitting the right floor? And we want to make sure we hear from you to make sure that, that, that this tool continues to refine. And now we want to hear from you one more time to get this uh, survey done so feel free to scan this qr code get access here and then um additionally awesome saying appreciate that got it <laughs> all right man well no let's clap it up for Shane, everybody and uh thank clap it up for yourselves thank you guys for joining our session today and like the time and uh as shane mentioned i wanted to just share a little bit uh with you all about our equity and lease series so this is the opportunity for us to really First and foremost, center BIPOC young adults. Uh, we're focusing in on LA County uh, experience and their desire and vision for uh, economic empowerment, mobility, and inclusion. Uh, we had a successful launch event uh, where we brought a number of stakeholders from uh, Los Angeles, including town developers, employers, and uh, young adults from all across the county together to really start the conversation around what their vision is. We introduced them to our uh, six dimensions, 
of economic empowerment and have really insightful conversations. So we're looking to continue um, in our event series, our Equity Unleashed event series uh, going into 2024. So keep a lookout on your emails and on the website for updates, but we're going to be having uh, two additional conversations, one with our town development partners and our community college partners. Uh, so everybody on this call, uh, you guys are going to be re-invited to join us for that. And we really want to be able to center your experiences around what economic empowerment looks like and supporting BIPOC young adults and really understanding how we can leverage apprenticeships as a vehicle um, to achieve that vision in many ways and what supports that you guys need. And then we'll have a third conversation centered with employers. Uh, same conversations, really looking at that delta or that change between um, the vision that economic or the vision that young adults has set forth and the reality and the practicality and feasibility of that vision within the constraints of the workforce. Um, so we want to understand that conversation with employers. So again, for any entrepreneur joining us on a call or that may be watching this recording, uh, we're going to definitely be sure to um, invite you guys back to the conversation as well as your networks as well. Um, and then lastly, we'll have accumulating an event um, back in person. Uh, so stay tuned. That'll probably be towards the end of quarter one in 2024. So yeah, stay tuned for more updates on that. As I said, we'll be sending out emails and check out the uh, website for future updates on that end. And with again, thank you guys for taking the time to spend your morning with us. Um, and for those that are watching and recording, we we'll appreciate the time. If you have any questions, I um, want to provide any feedback or know more about either our Equity Unleashed series or more about our uh, Rise, Power, or Play tools, um, please feel free to drop us an email. Uh, you can contact us at john uh, at leadersup.org. And uh, yeah, we'll be more than happy to set some time up and chat with you more. So with that, thank you for today. And thank you for the time. Shane, thank you again so much. Really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully everybody has a great Thursday. and Happy holidays.